Hello and welcome to this video in which we introduce um, a class of signals, uh, discrete time signals that are important in a lot of different applications. And these are what we call real exponentials. And uh, we have here on the screen a graph of some real exponentials. Um, they're uh, exponentially increasing and exponentially decaying signals. And again, these show up in a lot of different applications. Um, it also is helpful to understand these to understand complex exponentials, which are even more useful. So a real exponential generally has the form uh, discrete time signal of xn is equal to alpha raised to the nth power, where this alpha is usually a real number. Uh, sometimes more generally, you'll see this structure but you'll also have some amplitude A in front of it. So, well, that's kind of messy. So, in any case, um, this is the structure of a real exponential. And depending on the characteristics of alpha, your real exponential may have uh, several different uh, characteristics that will look different. So, um, in, this first, in this first graph here, this is a case where alpha is greater than 1, and alpha uh, is also, in fact, let me put it this way, the magnitude of alpha is greater than 1, and alpha is positive. Okay, So if the magnitude of alpha is greater than 1, you can see that at 0, I have a value of 1, which is what you would expect. And then as n goes to the right, where it's positive, uh, the exponential increases. As n goes to the left for negative values, the exponential decreases. This second graph over here is a case where the magnitude of alpha is still greater than 1. And you can see that the values, uh, let's see, this is the point where n is equal to 0. And you can see the values increase uh, in magnitude for values of n larger than 0 and decrease for values of n less than 0. But in this case, alpha itself is less than 0. So alpha here is negative. If I remember correctly, alpha is about negative 1.1 for this graph. And because alpha is negative, uh, you alternate um, between a positive value, so this would be alpha to the 0, alpha to the 1, alpha squared, alpha cubed, and so on. And so with alpha negative, you get this um, alternating sign. Uh, we also have the case then where the magnitude of alpha is less than 1 and alpha is positive. And that gives us something that looks like this. Again, this is the point where alpha is 0. For positive n, the graph decreases. For negative n, the graph increases. And finally, as you might guess, uh, out here we have the magnitude of alpha is less than 1, but alpha is also less than 0. So um, if I remember correctly, this is an alpha of about negative 0.9. So again, for alpha or for n equals 0, I have a value of 1, and then as n gets or as n is positive, it decreases, uh, the magnitude decreases, but it changes sign. And as for n is negative, the magnitude increases and it changes sign. So that's a useful, a useful signal. Again, these show up all the time uh, when you're working with uh, discrete time systems. Uh, one last thing to, to point out, what the effect of an amplitude or an A has. So this x of n is equal to some amplitude alpha to the n. And in the case of these plots, for both of them, alpha is positive, And the magnitude of alpha is less than 1. I believe it's about 0.9. OK. And so this is the n is equal to 0 value. And for the red one, which is just x of n is equal to alpha raised to the nth power, you can see that the magnitude of x 
uh, 0 is 1, which you would expect it to be. Alpha to the 0 is 1. And then it decreases as n is, goes positive, and it increases as n goes negative. Uh, for the green one, I have xn is equal to 3 times alpha to the n. So you can see that by multiplying everything by 3, I've increased the magnitude here to 3, and I still have the same slow or the same shape in the sense that as n is positive, uh, it decreases, and as n is negative, it increases. And in fact, um, I still actually have the same ratio between adjacent points. So for example, this point here is alpha times smaller than this point. Well, that's also true up here. This point here is alpha times smaller than this point. OK, so I still have the same ratio between points, but because I've multiplied it by this 3, I have a larger amplitude. So hopefully you found this useful and understandable. Again, these sorts of signals will be popping up all over the place um, in our study of discrete time signals and systems.